الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد تاب الله على النبي والمهاجرين والأنصار الذين اتبعوه في ساعة العسرة من بعد ما كاد يزيغ قلوب فريق منهم ثم تاب عليهم إنه بهم رؤوف رحيم وعلى الثلاثة الذين خلفوا حتى إذا ضاقت عليهم الأرض بما رحبت وضاقت عليهم أنفسهم وظنوا أن لا ملجأ من الله إلا إليه ثم تاب عليهم ليتوبوا إن الله هو التواب الرحيم صدق الله العظيم These ayahs that I have just recited from Surah Tawbah are regarding a special incident that took place at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the time of the battle of Tabuk, which was the last battle at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. During the battle of Tabuk, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked all the Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een to join the Muslim army. The battle of Tabuk took place at a time when it was extremely hot. And normally Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before going into a battle, he would never inform the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in of the exact direction. But at the time of the battle of Tabuk, he informed them that we are going, to, we are heading towards Tabuk. And prepare accordingly, because the hot season, and we are going to be <coughs> facing one of the superpowers of the world, the Roman Empire. As all the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een were preparing for it, there were some people in Medina Munawwara. As Quran calls them Al Munafiqeen. They, of course, had decided not to join. The only people that were exempted from joining were children, elderly people, sick people, and women. In addition to these people, the only people who did not join were munafiqeen with the exception of three people. And these ayahs of Quran of Al Quran al Kareem, they talk about those three people. Especially one of those three people was very young, very healthy, strong, and he could not join. But he set a perfect example for the Ummah of speaking the truth, 
He is a Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who says, and very truthfully he makes the statement that no one had to suffer so much because of speaking the truth as much as I did. And he goes further to say, no one was tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for speaking the truth the way I was tested. And I never knew the result or the fruit of speaking the truth will be so sweet. And the benefit of speaking the truth will be so high and great. After I was tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and once I spoke the truth and I was tested, I knew how beneficial it is to speak the truth at a time when you feel lying may be necessary and important. Normally, we don't lie at all the times. And therefore, we don't consider ourselves liars. But if we ask ourselves, do you lie at a time when you need to? At a time when we feel that I have to lie. I have to make up something at this time. Otherwise, I will be in hardship, I will be in difficulty, I will be in trouble. This is the way out of that difficult situation that I'll just make up something. Do we speak the truth even at that time that I can face any hardship, I can go through any difficulty, I can, whatever the consequences may be, I have to speak the truth? There might be some people who would really be of that high morals, but it's difficult really not to say, not to speak a lie even at that time when it's really needed and we feel it's needed. But here is a lesson from these Sahaba Ridwanullahi who tells us that at the time of the worst difficulty and Knowing that you would face the worst consequences of speaking the truth, still speaking the truth and avoiding the lie, will get us some benefits that are unseen and will get us the results that we never expect. The three Sahaba Ridwanullahi Majma'een who did not join Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the Battle of Tabuk were Ka'ab bin Malik radiyallahu anhu, Hilal bin Umayyah, and Murarah bin al-Rabiyya, radwanullahi alayhim ajma'in. <coughs> Other than these, the rest of the healthy people, healthy men that did not join were munafiqin. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced for Sahaba to prepare to go for the battle, to, for the battle of Tabuk, Ka'ab bin Malik radiyallahu anhu says, that was the time when I was wealthier, wealthy, and I was very strong. Never in my life I was so independent and so wealthy as much as I was at the time of the Battle of Tabuk. So every morning I would leave home with an intention that I would be preparing to go with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll buy whatever it needs, I, needs to, I need to buy. But at the end of the day, I was ending up doing just my own work, taking care of my land, cultivating the land, taking care of my business, and come back home, not doing, not done anything for preparing to go with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And every day I kept on postponing it. I would leave home with an intention of preparing, but ending up doing all of my work, taking care of my business, and thinking that I can do this tomorrow also, I would postpone that preparation for the next day because I have my horses ready, I have my camel ready, I have all the money, I have everything. It will need me, it, I will need only a few hours just to go out and buy a few things here and there and I'll be, re I'll be ready to go. And he says, I kept on postponing it till it was the day when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was leaving. On that day, I said, I must go and prepare today. 
But as it is the situation of this dunya, of this worldly gain, the more you spend to it, the more time you give it, the more it will require from you. And few more things he said I had to do for my work. I said, let me just finish those things and right away I'll go and prepare to go with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And one after another, the work kept on, coming, kept on coming up. I finish one and there is another one more thing I need to do. And I finish that one, there is one more small thing I need to do. And finally, I spend the whole day after my work without making any preparations to go with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But I said to myself, still I had in my mind that I'm going to join. This time I have a fast running horse. So let Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leave with the rest of the Sahaba today. I'll join them tomorrow. And the next day he goes out with the same intention of preparing, but it still ends up getting busy in his own work. And really, this is nothing that we would call it a history. It's something that is getting repeated on our day-to-day basis. That every time we promise our soul, now I will do this. I will start doing this. But inshallah, I will start next month. Starting next month, I will give this much in the path of Allah. Every month, it will be just out of my paycheck. Okay, I'll do it next month, inshallah. And we may have spent many years of our lives just thinking it will be next month or next year. And every Ramadan, we promise our souls, I will continue reciting the Quran. I will continue with Salat al Tahajjud. Okay, I'll do it tomorrow. It's Eid, so I'll do it tomorrow, the next day of Eid. Oh, I'm too tired me these days. So let me just give myself a break for a couple of days and then I will start. And here we see another Ramadan coming and we haven't started yet. This is how, this is a lesson that we get from these Sahaba Ridwanullah Alimajmain. You postpone the work, you never get it done. So Ka'ab bin Malik radiyallahu anhu says, even the next day I went, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left, had left, and the next day I went out for preparation, and still there was some more work needs to be done. And I said to myself, I still I have a first fast running horse, and of course there will be stationing at every time of salah, the time of every salah there will station, and it's a large group, so there will be stationing for a long time. I won't have to station for such a long time. I won't have to sleep for the nights. I'll just continue my journey and I'll catch up to these people. And next day and third day and every day just postponing it. And finally, it was the day that he heard that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had already arrived the book. <coughs> it's good that Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu, for him it was that that he got the news that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa arrived the book. And now he's thinking of correcting himself. For many of us, we don't realize until we see the angels of death. The last moments of our lives. And then we remember all of these promises that we used to make to ourselves and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would do this. I would do this. I get little more profit, I would do this. I, if I would, if this thing is successful, then I would do this. And subhanAllah, if we try to make a list of our own promises, there will be a long list that we made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of promises that we made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are never fulfilled, and we don't even think of fulfilling those promises. Ka'ab bin Malik radiyallahu anhu says, finally, now I knew that as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived the book, there is no need for me and no reason for me to leave now. I can't do that anymore. And now he's waiting for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to come back. As he heard that he's, he's, he's on his way back. Now, there were some munafiqeen. 
these munafiqeen were preparing excuses to tell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, my son was sick, my wife was sick, I was sick. Ya Rasulullah, this was the problem I had with my family. And everyone is coming with his own excuses. And now they are approaching Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would come back, the best thing for you is that you also make a good excuse. And he thought, yes, I should do that. Otherwise, he, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would be very upset with me and see how shaitan works. He's telling him that if you speak the truth, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will be upset with you. So the reason you are speaking, the, uh, you are saying a lie, it's to get the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And that's rewarding to please Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So you will get a reward by that lie. How shaitan tries to deceive people. You'll get a reward by lying. And he says, this is what I thought of doing. Just like when you go back to Surah Yusuf. And the brothers of Yusuf, alayhi salatu was salam, they said, you know, it's rewarding to please your father. We need to get a full attention of our father. In order to do that, اُقْتُلُوا يُوسُفَ أَوِ اطْرَحُوهُ أَرْضًا يَخْلُ لَكُمْ وَجْهُ أَبِيكُمْ Kill Yusuf or throw him somewhere away in the desert so that you would have full attention of your father. And after that you will become virtuous people. See, by killing your brother, you will become virtuous people. This is how when shaitan plays his role. This is how he starts giving us his ideas. That you do something haram to the extent of killing lying and you will get a reward from Allah keep on expecting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing these deeds subhanallah it's very important for us to keep these things in mind if he can do it to the sons of Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam he's doing it to the children of Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam they live in the house of a prophet of Allah and he's playing these games with them. He's putting these things in their minds. Who are we? If he's doing the same thing to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, to those who are in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and is putting these ideas in their minds, just think what would be our situation? How can he, how, how he would be deceiving us and what things, how what type of games he might be playing with us and we don't even realize it. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived Medina Munawwara, all the munafiqeen went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and started making their excuses and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would tell them, may Allah forgive you, may Allah forgive you. Ka'ab bin Malik radiyallahu anhu went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but by the time he was walking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he had made his decision that no, I cannot do that. I cannot lie at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Lying can never bring me anything good. He said, Ya Rasulullah. He's sitting in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah. I was never so prosperous, so wealthy, so strong before I had all the means to join you. But Ya Rasulullah, I could not. I just kept on postponing it. Until you left, and still I had the intention of joining you. But still I continued postponing it till I heard that you arrived the book. Ya Rasulullah, I knew you would be upset with me by saying this, by hearing this. But if I would have been sitting in the presence of any other king in the world, I would have made the best lies and know you know Ya Rasulullah, Allah has given me the power of speech. I would have made, fabricated the best lies to please that person. But I knew if I would lie at you today Ya Rasulullah, you would be pleased with me today, but tomorrow something will happen, Allah will show the result of my lie and you will be upset with me, therefore I decided to speak the truth assign whatever punishment you would like to assign for me, Ya Rasulullah, I'm willing to take it. Subhanallah. Look at the obedience. 
He is not a child. He is a father of children. A married man who has children. Ya Rasulullah, assign whatever punishment you would like to and I would accept that punishment. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay, go back at this time and I will tell you what to do. As he left, people followed him. The same people who made their excuses, they went after him. Why didn't you just make an excuse? See, when we made an excuse to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's told us, may Allah forgive you. And as Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, may Allah forgive you, all of our sins are forgiven now. But you didn't get the forgiveness of Allah. Why don't you go back and tell him that no, that wasn't true, and just make, us, make up a story. He says, I thought of going back because I knew that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is upset. I thought of going back and saying, Ya Rasulullah, no, my first statement wasn't right and here this, this was the reason. But then I thought, no, I should not lie. I should hold to this truth. And I realized that there are two more Sahaba Ridwanullahi who also spoke the truth. And because of that, they were treated the same way as I was treated. Rest of the people, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, may Allah forgive you. And here we can see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this understanding of differentiating between the truth and falsehood. That all those people, they are speaking, they are saying, they are making their own excuses. They are coming up with fabricated stories. And he says, okay, may Allah forgive you, just go. And here this person, when he said, he, when he, when he said the truth, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you look at the hadith, the hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used the word, Amma hadha faqad sadaq. Yes, he has said the truth. He has said the truth. And the punishment that was assigned for these three Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam, who spoke the truth, was no one was allowed to talk to these people. No one in Medina, no Muslim was allowed to talk to these people. Look how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is correcting these things in Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam. Ka'ab radiyallahu anhu says, I used to go to the masjid, I would say salam to a person, he would not even reply to my salam. I would go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, As-salamu alayka ya Rasulullah, he won't reply to my salam. But, Ka'ab radiyallahu anhu says, I knew in his heart he doesn't hate me. When I used to stand my salah and I'm looking down at the place of my sujood during salah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa will look at my face. But as soon as I would finish my salah and say my salams, then I will look at him, he'll turn his face away from me. Ka'ab radiyallahu anhu says, for 40 days this was my situation. Every day I'm going out to the masjid. I'm going out in the marketplace trying to see, talk to any Muslim, but no one wants to speak to me. He says, one day, I went to my cousin, who was my best friend also, Abu Qatada radiallahu anhu. I went to him. And I said, Abu Qatada, please tell me one thing. Don't you think I love Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Just tell me this much. Abu Qatada says, Allah and His Messenger knows the best. I don't know nothing about it. Ka'ab radiallahu anhu says, when I heard this, I started crying. I said, Ya Allah, there is no one even to witness for my iman anymore. And he says, my fear at that time was, what if I would die in this situation? I would be dying in a situation that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is upset with me. Does anyone want to look at my face? And if God forbid Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would die, then for the rest of my life, no one is going to shake hands with me, no one is going to talk to me, and no one may even perform my janazah. After 40 days, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a person, look at the test these people have to go through, just for making one mistake in their life. Making one mistake, the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in said to Ka'ab radiyallahu anhu, you never made any mistake in your life before this. O oh, Ka'ab, go and apologize to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That word is very important, that statement is very important, that you never made any mistake in your life before this, O oh, Ka'ab. 
go and apologize to Prophet wasallam. But for this mistake, this is the punishment. 40 days, no one is talking to them. And now this punishment is getting even severe. And a person goes to him, Ka'ab, Prophet wasallam said, that ask your wives to leave home. You are not allowed to be with your wife anymore. For all three Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een, leave your wives. And Ka'ab radiallahu anhu asked that person, is the requirement that we need to divorce our wives or just send them to their parents at this time until we get the forgiveness? He's ready even for that. And that person goes back and asks Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, Ka'ab is asking, do I have to divorce her or she would just go back to her parents? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, don't divorce her at this time. We don't know what will happen next, but don't divorce her at this time. And he tells his wife, go back to your own relatives. Stay with your relatives until Allah will make any decision about me. Subhanallah. Look at the obedience. Look at the obedience these Sahaba Ridwanullah had for Rasulullah, for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the love they had for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ka'ab radiallahu anhu says, I was walking out in the market. I was totally disturbed. I was crying. Ya Allah, what will happen to me now? What will happen to my faith and my iman now? This is the most valuable thing to me, but even the Prophet of Allah doesn't want to talk to me. And I saw a person who was asking, where is Ka'ab? People pointed towards me that Ka'ab is there. That person came to me. He said, Ka'ab, I have a king. I have a letter from the king. Which king? He is the king of Ghassan, under the superpower of Roman Empire. There was an Arab country, Ghassan. This is a letter from that king. I opened the letter, and the letter said, O oh Ka'ab, I heard that your man, which means your prophet, doesn't want to honor you anymore, doesn't want to pay you the respect that you deserve, O oh Ka'ab. But you are not a type of person that should be humiliated in that way. Come to me, I'll give you everything that you need. Ka'ab radiallahu anhu says, as soon as I read the letter, I started crying. I said to Allah, Ya Allah, have, have I got, have gone so low that now even the kuffar are having hope in my kuffar? Ya Allah, have I done something so bad that these kuffar now are hoping that I will leave my faith and my iman and my prophet and I would just go and join them, Ya Allah? Ya Allah, please save me. He burned the paper right there and he told him that this is the reply to the king. Go and tell him this is what I said. After 50 days, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received some ayahs of Al-Quran Al-Kareem that are of Surah Tawbah that I recited in the beginning. وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا Allah has forgiven those three Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhim ajma'een whose matter was postponed. When all the munafiqeen, they were told, okay, just go ahead, don't worry about it. Their matter was postponed. حَتَّى إِذَا ضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ When the whole world became narrow for them in spite of its vastness. And their own hearts, their own nafs, their own souls became too difficult to carry for themselves. They were thinking, death is better for us at this time. ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا Allah has forgiven them so that they can repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ka'ab radiallahu anhu says, when he heard these ayahs, he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asked him, Ya Rasulullah, did you forgive me or Allah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, O oh Ka'ab, the punishment was assigned by Allah so that people will learn this lesson that even people of your age and people as great as you people are, Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi need to be corrected by the Prophet of Allah, need to learn these lessons of Islam, need, need to learn these lessons of morals from the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and therefore the forgiveness also came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These ayahs have been revealed about your situation. Ka'ab radiallahu anhu says, I never knew speaking the truth will be so great and such a great and such a rewarding thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal ayahs in Quran al-Kareem about our situation because we spoke the truth. Allah will reveal ayahs in Quran al-Kareem that will be recited till the day of judgment and people will remember us till the day of judgment that these are the Sahaba 
who refused to lie and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approved them so much that he revealed ayahs about them and because of this blessing this barakah of speaking the truth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put so much strength and so much power in their words Ka'b radiyallahu anhu once after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he went to invite a clan a whole clan towards Islam he gathered them he just recited two poems he just read two poems and the whole clan became Muslim. People used to see the power of his speech in, in the words of Ka'b radiallahu anhu who says that I have moved to my soul. I would never speak a lie after seeing this great fruit of speaking the truth and after being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after having these ayahs revealed about me in Quran al kareem I would never speak a lie in my life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq to follow these steps of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een and learn our lessons and good morals and uh, our faith and iman from these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimina wal-muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi